Welcome back to A Natural Garden, a series created for natural gardeners here in Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, and around the world. This is the third episode we've created, and we look forward to seeing the direction these videos take us in the future. There are plant species and gardening topics that we will cover quickly in this video that deserve a whole series of their own. We hope that this weekly series will help independent natural gardeners discover the amazing world in their own backyards. Milkweed has started to bloom in our gardens, and it's a perfect time to admire this powerhouse plant. It's a flagship species for natural gardening, but its relationship with the monarch butterfly is not the only reason to appreciate it. Red milkweed beetles are just some of the insects that you will see covering this plant right now. It seems there is always something happening on our milkweed plants. Another milkweed species blooming now is butterfly weed. The orange blooms are unique among native plants in Minnesota. This is a low growing plant that does well along the edge in dry sunny locations. Thimbleweed has started to bloom in our shadier gardens and although it doesn't stand out strongly right now, the seed heads later in fall are super fun. Glade mallow is a state-threatened species here in Minnesota, although it has done well grown by seed in our gardens. Not unlike other perennials, it can take five years to flower for the first time. While you're waiting, enjoy the big, fun leaves. We love great Indian plantain, which is just starting to bloom. This is a tall, sturdy plant with large leaves, and reseeds readily in our gardens, especially along the edges. Cut off the flowering stalks in spring to get a nice cluster of large leaves throughout the summer. If you still have springtime invasives like Dame's Rocket in your garden, now might be the last chance you have to remove them. Over the next couple of weeks, the now green seed heads will mature and release hundreds of seeds. Pull them for the best results and make sure to remove them from your gardens. Canada thistle is making its presence known, and despite the name, it is not native to North America. Wear gloves when working with this one. It is not very nice. Although you might get some satisfying pulls, each plant is connected by an underground root network that will continue to put up new shoots. That being said, we've had really good luck with pulling in nearly all of our gardens, with obvious results visible in the first year. We spent a lot of time working on buckthorn, which is among the most well-known of our problem species here in Minnesota, and also one of the most obvious. Common buckthorn is a shrub, sometimes small tree, that can be found almost everywhere, especially in wooded areas. Depending on the size of the plants and the population, there is a buckthorn-related task to complete all year long, even in winter. In summer, we work on pulling smaller buckthorn shrubs from the ground with the help of a special root-cutting shovel. The natural gardening method of removing buckthorn involves working on one plant at a time, taking care of the other native plant species that are often growing within a stand of buckthorn. Although it may seem like hard work, you'd be amazed by how much can be accomplished after a few hours and how little disturbance is left behind. Buckthorn has a relatively shallow root system and is usually anchored down by just a few shallow, horizontal roots. With experience, you will begin to feel these roots with each stroke of the shovel, sometimes releasing the plant after just a couple jabs. We always throw down a native seed mix in the disturbed soil when we're done working in an area, even in the middle of summer. There's a lot more we can share about our buckthorn removal methods, and we hope to make a much more extensive video on buckthorn in the future. Summer is officially here, and while there is still work to do in the gardens, our technique changes from earlier in June. The time for aggressively cutting back large swaths of plant growth is over. Now we spend our time selectively cutting back specific plants to achieve the desired growth we'd like to see for the remainder of the season. This is primarily directed at the plants we know will eventually grow too large and flop over into our walkways or onto other plants. It's not all just cutbacks though. 
Even in an established natural garden like ours, we still have weeds to work on through the early summer, in this case creeping bellflower, a species that deserves its own video in the future. As always, we compost everything. The rich compost we've created through the years and this spring is paying off in the form of some really great looking veggies in our vegetable gardens. We always try to do something a little different each year and we're really excited about what we have growing this year. Here at the end of June, we've reached a turning point in our natural gardens. The spring blooms are gone and we're just beginning to see the summer flowers that will be with us throughout the warm months. This is the time many of the native plants in our gardens will experience their peak bloom and also when we will see more insects than at any time of the year. We have a lot to look forward to and we hope to share it with you. See you next week!